Jake Ludington here at IBM Impact, and I'm here with Olivia Blanchard. And social media ROI. This is something that has been out there. People still, for whatever reason, think that it's all about retweets, follows, things like that, and don't look at the bigger picture business strategy. You actually wrote the book on the big picture business strategy. Yeah, I did. Oh, and there's a question in there. Um, so yeah, no, the, the tweets, the likes, the, the impressions, all those things matter. They're, they're good media indicators of you know, how your content's performing. Um, but, but it doesn't really drive any business results. And so there's the media piece of, of measuring the direct impact of your stuff, but then there's a deeper piece of driving business outcomes, whether it's sales or it's fixing a PR problem or it's improving customer service. And that starts with understanding what about your business you're trying to improve and then using social channel and, and social business processes or programs to try to enhance that. Uh, and that has nothing to do with likes, comments, and followers. It's, it's a much deeper process that at some point, if you're looking at, at the financial rewards of investing in a program and, and coming out on the back end of that with, with financial outcomes, whether it's a cost savings inside the organization, like using social to cut costs in customer service without making customer service worse, hopefully improving it, or it's selling more of a product, uh, or you know, acquiring that new customers, deriving more business from your existing customers. All those things result in sales dollars, and, and so you can connect that to your social investment. So it's, it's money in, and then the money that you get back. Uh, that's actual ROI. Uh, everything else that's not financially related is, is impact, it's important, but it's not ROI. How does a company go about identifying what they should be measuring to achieve that, that ROI? Well, it depends what they're trying to drive. That's the whole thing. So there's this cookie cutter model of measuring social media and, and, and social activity, which is always the likes, the follows, the shares, the, the impressions, uh, to some extent the click-throughs, which actually gets you a step closer to business. But that cookie, cookie cutter model of, of measuring all of these things has absolutely nothing to do with, with measuring the effectiveness of the program that's supposed to drive a particular outcome. So you're, if, if you shape your content and your social program, so your activity, based on what you're trying to drive, then what you're trying to drive becomes the metric. It becomes the measurement, right? So everything that you do ends up being measured there at the end, at the outcome that you expected. Not over here with the likes and the kind of like the intermediates uh, outcome. You, you have to follow through with what you're trying to accomplish. And if you're not measuring all the way through, if you're only measuring at the beginning, at, at the interaction of, of the social content, um, you're not measuring the right thing. You're stopping short of where you need to measure. So it's almost like a, an attribution model. Uh, well, there's there's an attribution model in there, but I think there's a false attribution model, which which is we invest in the social content or the social activity, and then we measure the direct impact of that, and we are going to magically try to attribute the notion of we spent this money, we did this social stuff, we measured the likes and impressions, and then somewhere down the line we can attribute it to whatever happens that we weren't really responsible for or weren't trying to drive in the first place. And that's absurd. There's like this huge piece missing between that measurements and, and the actual, <laughs> actual outcomes that you're trying to drive. So, um, so, and there's a last click attribution model too also with, within that where if, if you're measuring click-throughs from a particular link, um, you're going to try to attribute the entire success of, of that campaign to specific instances where somebody clicked on that, um, on that link. When you might have a long tail of, of um, effect where somebody first discovered the product, discovered your account, started following it, started paying attention, and then eventually clicked on it, and, and you don't necessarily see that with like a last click attribution model, for example. And that, that can be a little bit dangerous um, if, if an agency or your marketing or social business uh, program or department shows you this stuff and you don't challenge that, you don't challenge the cause and effect of where it all began, what you did, and where you ended up. So one of the things that, that I think is interesting, you, you wrote a blog post yesterday where you were talking about the erosion of the uh, kind of barriers between marketing and IT. And I yep. think that the barriers that exist between those, those two functions, um, to me it seems like, would make it more difficult to establish an ROI. 
Um, well, the, the problem and the, the context of that particular blog post and, and the, the move to an erosion of, si not an erosion of silos, but an erosion of walls between marketing and, and the technical parts of the business uh, in terms of big data, in terms of, of consumer insights and all the technology that, that enables insights coming in and being able to react and create programs that actually drive uh, the outcomes that we were talking about based on that feedback and based on those insights. If you don't break down those silos, marketing is just pushing content and just putting it out there and measuring likes and impressions and, and so nothing moves. And on the other hand, if, if you don't break down that, that wall on the IT side, on the, on the CTO and CIO side, what happens is you have this technological bubble within the company that's disconnected from what everybody needs technology to do. So the CMO doesn't know what he can actually do with technology. The CEO might not know. And you have an IT guy who's basically trying to cut costs by just going and, and you know pushing capabilities into the cloud, but nobody in the business understands what that means other than we save some costs on server space. Um, so if, if you don't break down those walls, companies aren't evolving. They don't have the opportunity to realize all of the things that they can do now that are cost effective, that, that can be done faster, better than they could be done five years ago. And it's particularly important in, in the mid-market because enterprise has always kind of done that. Enterprise understands big data, and big analysis, um, and, and they have the budgets. But in the mid-market, you have all these companies and all these agencies that have no idea that it's available, that they could be doing it right now, that the tools are there, that it's, that it's actually easy and that you don't have to be a tech genius to figure out how technology can use your marketing department, your social business program, your customer service department. It's, it's easier than it's ever been. And we don't get to that point unless we start getting the CMO and the CTO or the CIO to start talking to each other and collaborating on, hey, can you help me do this? And right now that's not happening. So how do you get them to talk? <laughs> you change the culture. Well, first you have to, to explain the value. So I think there's an education piece. Um, so it's like awareness and education. And you know, events like this, there's, there's a lot of technology professionals here, a lot of solutions professionals and partners. I don't see a lot of CMOs. And CMOs tend to go to different events. And so I think that it's, you have, you have a technical message that I've been hearing here that, that resonates with me from an operational standpoint, but that would completely fly over the head of most marketing professionals. And so I, I think that the challenge and the opportunity is to tweak that message and translate it into not just technical possibilities, but, um, but business outcomes that relate to marketing, that relate to sales, that relate to, to building better businesses, um, line, of business, uh, line of business by line of business, and, and then just kind of creating an ecosystem in the company that's, that's going to be, sorry, my phone's ringing. It's really distracting. <laughs> um, my pocket is ringing. Um, and, and building that, that ecosystem, I think, from line of business to line of business, um, as opposed to trying to change company culture from the top down or saying, okay, we have a three-year plan of we're going to change everything. Um, I think you have to do it project by project, department by department, test it out, gain confidence in it, teach CMOs and, and other line of business professionals to kind of understand how new business works as opposed to how it was done five years ago, ten years ago, or how they learned it in business school. Um, and eventually you grow into something that's, that's, um, that's more organic and that, that's just evolved, right? I mean, I think that's it. That sounds like another uh, great book opportunity for you. Uh, okay, yeah, my, my editor, if you're listening, yeah. No, I think, yeah, I need to probably start working on that, yeah? So what, what would we call it? What do we call the book? Uh, I, I, I'm stuck on that one. Yeah, the, the evolved business, I don't know. Well, Break, we'll breaking down walls. Breaking down walls, destroying silos. There you go, perfect. There we go, thanks Olivia. All right, cool, thanks a lot, appreciate it.